Climate of Chicago The climate of Chicago is classified as hot summer humid continental Koppen, DFA with all four seasons distinctly represented. Winters are cold and see frequent snow and near zero deg F18 deg see wind chill temperatures, while summers are warm and humid with temperatures being hotter inland. Spring and fall bring bouts of both cool and warm weather and Annual precipitation in Chicago is moderate and relatively evenly distributed, the driest months being January and February and the wettest July and August. Chicago's weather is influenced during all four seasons by the nearby presence of Lake Michigan. Official Locations The National Weather Service Office in Chicago has one of the longest periods of official weather records, dating back to 1870, Though all the 1870 and 1871 weather records taken at 181 West Washington Street were lost in the Great Chicago Fire. Of the two major airports located in Chicago, Midway Airport began observations in 1928 and O'Hare Airport began them in 1958. Both sites have served in the past as the official observation location, the latter being the current official station. Weather data from Midway Airport before July 1, 1942, and after January 16, 1980, and data from O'Hare Airport before January 17, 1980, are not part of the official climate record of Chicago. Here is a list of official weather observation locations for the Chicago office. Note, some of the addresses prior to 1909 are different than the Postminus 1909 addresses. Classifications, classifications, data, see or edit raw graph data, seasons, winter, er, 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 er. spring, spring in Chicago is perhaps the city's most unpredictable season. Winter can last until April or even May, with the 1953-54 winter in Chicago lasting from November until May, as measured by time span between the first and last measurable snows of the season. Thunderstorms can occur any time of the year, but are most prevalent in the springtime as the city's central location within the United States as well as its lakeside location makes it a center of conflicts between large volumes of warm and cold air, which can trigger a wide variety of severe weather. The most severe storms can contain large hail, damaging straight-line winds, flooding, and tornadoes. Since 1850, 17 tornadoes have struck the Chicago city limits. During thunderstorms, lightning strikes are seen to frequently hit Chicago's skyscrapers. On the other hand, large snowfalls can also occur in late March and in early April. For example, in 1970, over 10 and 25 cm of snow fell in a storm that occurred on April 1-2. Twelve years later, opening day for the Chicago White Sox was postponed due to another 9-inch 23 cm snowfall that had occurred on April 5. Even more extraordinary, over 18 and 46 cm of snow fell on March 25-26, 1930, which remains one of the city's five biggest recorded snowstorms despite it occurring past the vernal equinox. The average date for last measurable snowfall equals 0.1 in or 0.25 cm is April 1. Temperatures vary tremendously in the springtime. At 100 deg F38 deg C, March is the month with the greatest span between the record high and low. At O'Hare, temperatures as low as 7 deg F14 deg C and 31 deg F1 deg C have been recorded as late as April 7 and May 21 respectively. Conversely, in official records, the earliest 100 deg F38 deg C high occurred on June 1, 1934, when official readings were taken closer to Lake Michigan. Though rare, triple-digit heat has occurred in late May at Midway Airport and in outlying suburban locations. Typically, the last freezing low of the season on average occurs on April 13 at Midway and 10 days later at O'Hare. The highest temperature recorded during the meteorological spring months of March, April, and May is officially 98 deg F37 deg C on May 31, 1934, when weather records were still taken near Lake Michigan. 
The lowest temperature recorded in meteorological spring is 12 deg F24 deg C, set on March 4, 1873. During the springtime, the effects of Lake Michigan are most prevalent. During this season, the lake is still quite cold as the effects of much warmer temperatures are slow to affect the large body of water of Lake Michigan. It is common for Lake Michigan shoreline and water temperatures to remain in the 40s even into May. If the winds blow from the east or from Lake Michigan into the city, a wide discrepancy in temperatures in a matter of miles can be found, especially on particularly warm days. It is not uncommon for high temperatures to be officially recorded in the 80s or lower 90s deg F2734 deg C, particularly in early June, at O'Hare, Midway, and in suburban locations, but to have temperatures be 20 to 30 deg F11 to 17 deg C cooler along the immediate lakeshore. Summer On a typical summer day, humidity is usually moderately high and temperatures ordinarily reach anywhere between 78 and 92 deg F26 and 33 deg C. In July, it isn't uncommon for the temperature to go around 90 and 93 deg F32 and 34 deg C. Overnight temperatures in summer usually drop to around 65 70 deg F1821 deg C, although even in July and August there can be several nights where the temperature drops below 60 deg F16 deg C, particularly during the cooler summers, and it is not uncommon to see temperatures plummet lower than 50 deg F10 deg C. Conversely, on the other extreme, temperatures can on a rare basis remain above 80 deg F27 deg C overnight, though this level of overnight warmth is generally limited to the city proper with its urban heat island effects along with Lake Michigan nearby. On such warm nights, especially during strong heat waves, most suburban locations drop down to between 75 and 79 deg F24 and 26 deg C, but quickly rebound in the early morning hours. During such strong heat waves, the outlying suburban areas can record temperatures more than 5 deg F2.8 deg C above city and lakeshore locations. A perfect example of such an occurrence happening, although considered unofficial, occurred during the Dust Bowl years. Midway Airport recorded a record eight consecutive 100 deg F plus days in July 1936. In that heat wave, temperatures at the lake remained in the middle and upper 90s Fahrenheit middle 30 Celsius, whereas Midway Airport recorded temperatures over 100 deg F38 deg C for nearly two weeks, peaking at 107 deg F42 deg C on July 11. The official record high for Chicago for July 11 is also from 1936, but is recorded as just 97 deg F36 deg C. Further west in what would today be the near and far suburbs e.g. DuPage County and westward, temperatures reached a blistering 110 deg F43 deg C or still higher at points during this massive heat wave. These extreme temperatures are not shown in the official records because daily weather observations were taken at the University of Chicago until 1942. The University of Chicago is close to the lake which can and does reduce temperatures in the immediate shoreline area in the summer. The highest temperature recorded in Chicago during the meteorological summer months of June, July, and August, which is also additionally the all-time record high in the city, is 105 deg F41 deg C, set on July 24, 1934, though at Midway Airport, a future observation site, the temperature reached 109. The lowest temperature recorded in the meteorological summer months is 35 deg F2 deg C, set on June 4, 1945. In addition, the all-time record high minimum temperature of 85 deg F29 deg C was set on July 29, 1916. Chicago's yearly precipitation comes in at an average of about 36 inches 910 mm, but during the summer, rain arises from short-lived hit or miss rain rather than actual prolonged rainfalls, and thunderstorms also occur with regularity at night. Jerichos are also common during the summertime, the most notable being 
the August 4, 2008 Dereco, which produced five tornadoes across the Chicago area and killed one person. In a normal summer, temperatures exceed 90 deg F32 deg C on 23 days. Summer is both the rainiest and sunniest season in Chicago. Only the three months of June through August experience more than 65% of possible sunshine. In July 2012, during the 2012 North American heat wave, Chicago reached and exceeded 100 deg F38 deg C for three consecutive days at O'Hare Airport, with highs reaching 103 deg F39 deg C in the city and many suburban areas recorded. It was the first time in 65 years that Chicago had ever seen a triad of 100 deg F38 deg C days. Chicago nearly recorded a fourth consecutive 100 deg F38 deg C day, but the temperature reached 98 degrees at O'Hare in late morning before a cold front came through the area and cooled temperatures off slightly in the city area, holding in the lower 90s. The effects of the cold front did not affect many suburban areas as temperatures reached or exceeded 100 deg F38 deg C for a fourth consecutive day throughout much of the region. During the summer, Lake Michigan continues to have an effect on Chicago weather, but it is not as common or as strong as it is during the spring months. On very hot days, temperatures can still be cooler along the immediate shoreline and slightly inland of the lake if winds blow from the east. Temperatures can be held in the 70s or 80s in these areas while outlying, and suburban areas temperatures are rising well into the 90s. Temperatures can also reach extreme levels of heat on the immediate shoreline, such as when the air temperature reached 105 deg F41 deg C at Northerly Island during the aforementioned July 2012 heat wave. Autumn mm -hmm. The extreme heat that Chicago is capable of experiencing during the height of the summer season can persist into the autumn season. Temperatures have reached 100 deg F38 deg C as late as September 7, with 99 deg F37 deg C occurring as late as September 29, and temperatures have reached 90 deg F32 deg C as late as October 6, which occurred in 1963, with a temperature of 94 deg. Conversely, temperatures have dropped to freezing overnight as early as September 23, and temperatures below zero deg. F-18 deg C have arrived as early as November 23. Although extremely rare, temperatures at or above 70 deg F-21 deg C have been recorded into early December, most recently in 2012 when 70 deg F-21 deg C was recorded on December 3, some surrounding areas reaching temperatures as high as 72 deg F-22 deg C to 75 deg F-24 deg Autumn, in some ways, is a calmer season than any of the other three in Chicago. However, wild weather can and does occur in the region during this season. The first freeze of the season on average occurs on October 24 at Midway and 11 days earlier at O'Hare. In most years, a period of warm weather, known as an Indian summer, occurs well after the autumnal equinox has occurred. In these so-called Indian summers, Unusually warm weather can persist for several days well into October, and in particularly warm autumns, into November. For example, during the 2005 American League Division Series, for both home games between the Chicago White Sox and the Boston Red Sox, temperatures soared to near 90 deg F32 deg C, despite the fact that it was already well into October. On top of that, during the same warm stretch in October 2005, for two consecutive days, the overnight temperature failed to drop below 70 deg F21 deg C, a rare occurrence for Chicago in October. The highest temperature recorded during the meteorological autumn months of September, October, and November is 101 deg F38 deg C, set on back-to-back -back days, September 1-2, 1953, closely followed by Chicago's latest 100 deg F38 deg C on September 7, 1960. The lowest temperature recorded during the meteorological autumn months is 2 deg F19 deg C, 
set on November 29, 1872, and tied on November 24, 1950. Autumn can bring heavy rain showers, some of which are capable of producing serious flooding. As the winter solstice nears, the threat of a major winter or snowstorm grows, and there have been major winter storms around the Thanksgiving holiday, causing major delays at the city's two major airports. The first measurable equals 0.1 and 0.25 cm snow on average falls on November 19. However, in the 2012-13 winter season, the first measurable snow did not fall until December 20, 2012, eclipsing the previous record of December 17, 1899. The 2012-13 autumn slash winter season would fail to produce a daily maximum temperature below freezing 32 deg F0 deg C until January 1, 2013, the first such time that has happened in Chicago weather records. The entire calendar year of 2012 did not record a temperature lower than 5 deg F15 deg C. The largest snowstorm before the winter solstice dropped 14.8 inches 380 mm at Midway Airport in December 1929. During the autumn, the effects of Lake Michigan are usually reversed from the spring or summer, particularly in the late autumn. Temperatures near the immediate lakeshore can be a few degrees warmer. It is rare, though possible, during the Indian summer when unusually warm temperatures are occurring in the inland areas of the city and suburbs for temperatures to be somewhat cooler along the lake as often happens during the spring season. Extremes The highest temperature ever recorded in the Chicago city limits is an unofficial 109 deg F43 deg C on July 24, 1934 at Midway Airport. The official reading of 105 deg F41 deg C for that day was taken at the University of Chicago campus near the shoreline off Lake Michigan. The 105 deg high that day is the highest official temperature ever recorded in the city. On July 29, 1916, the low temperature sank to only 85 deg F29 deg C. Many suburban locations have all-time records that have surpassed 110 deg F43 deg C. Readings near the lake can be several degrees cooler than inland locations if lake breezes are present, which suggests that the higher unofficial reading may also be accurate. During the Chicago heat wave of 1995, which killed 739 people, official temperatures reached 104 deg F40 deg C, at O'Hare Airport and 106 deg F41 deg C at Midway, but high humidity pushed the heat index to 1520 deg F811 deg C above actual air temperatures. The coldest temperature ever recorded in Chicago city limits is 27 deg F33 deg C at O'Hare on January 20, 1985, though unofficial temperatures as low as 33 deg F36 deg C have been recorded at Chicago Aurora Airport in far western suburbs and in the rural areas to the west of Chicago. On December 24, 1983, and January 18, 1994, the high temperature reached only 11 deg F24 deg C. The greatest 24-hour precipitation in a single calendar day was 6.86 in 174.2 mm at O'Hare on July 23, 2011. The greatest amount of precipitation that fell in a 24-hour period was 9.35 in 237.5 mm on August 13, 14, 1987. That event also set the records for heaviest 6- and 12-hour rainfall amounts and contributed to August 1987's record rainfall. The heaviest calendar day snowfall was 18.6 in 47 Point two cm again at O'Hare on January 2, 1999. Daily snow depth has amassed as high as 29 in 74 cm on January 14, 1979. As of 2019, January 1979 alone holds the first eight of the top ten daily snow depth measurements. Official monthly mean temperatures have ranged from 10.1 deg. F12.2 deg C in January 1977 to 81, 
.3 DEG F27.4 DEG C in July 1955, both recorded at Midway, while the annual mean temperature has ranged from 45.1 DEG F7.3 DEG. The driest month on record has been September 1979, with a mere 0 0.1 and 0 0.25 mm of rainfall, while the wettest is August 1987, with 17.10 in 434 mm of rainfall. Annual precipitation has ranged from 22.22 in .22 564 mm in 1962. Windy City Chicago is known as the Windy City. The Windy City moniker did not originally refer to Chicago's climate. It is believed to have been created by a New York newspaper writer deriding Chicago's bluster as they promoted their city as the site of the 1893 Columbian Exposition. It is also believed to be called the Windy City because of politicians in the area blowing hot air. In terms of climate, Chicago is slightly windier than the average American city. Average wind speeds range from 8 miles per hour 13 km h in summer to 12 miles per hour 19 km h in spring. Lake Breeze Chicago can be cooler and moister than other parts of Illinois because of its proximity to the relatively cooler waters of Lake Michigan, effects which are most pronounced during spring and early summer. A frequent lakeshore breeze pushes much cooler, moister air into Chicago than the usual hot air of the plains states usually a moist air mass depending on upper level circulation, but the effect can be so localized that only the immediate waterfront neighborhoods both north and south side lake adjacent communities are cooler than inland parts of the city. This is where the oft-repeated weather forecast phrase cooler by the lake comes from. Southwest and southwestern suburbs can be more than 20 deg F11 deg C warmer than the lakefront at some times of year. The lake breeze also has other effects, including dense fog spilling into the city. Because of the closed-loop circulation pattern with a lake breeze that moves back and forth across the city, it is thought to significantly increase low-level ozone counts. Differing wind direction on either side of the thermal dividing line allows for sharp updrafts under certain conditions favorable to thunderstorm development. Offshore or land breezes shut down the lake breeze and can have the opposite effect, with over-lake convection occurring usually in mid to late summer and autumn. As a general rule, the opposite trend occurs during the winter. Winter temperatures are warmer along the lakeshore and downtown than inland.